answer is yes, we do have. And one of the major industry, one especially in respect of military aviation, are our EPSs and our ordnance factories. The next question, after we say that it is there, has this made worthwhile dividends? In the last 72 years of independence, not to the extent when compared to some other nations of similar background, same time frame, or even, even less. Size wise, yes, we are comparable, and in some cases, we are bigger. But production wise, it's way forward to see. Now, although intent might be very good, but somehow I feel there is some break here, maybe the lack of commitment and the time and cost overruns is something we need to seriously think about. Now, has it paid us back? Next question, we have it. You know what we are doing? And has it paid us back? Yes, definitely to our own people, but not to the desired extent, to the IF, at least in terms of good, of quality and time. I'm sorry, but it's a fact. And generally, we are put three steps behind when compared to some of the other countries in the same bracket. Now, what about the export factor? I would say, ministry. So at the end of the day, what is it? Generally, we pay for them to pay their people and add a little bit to the government capital. In other words, it is taking from Peter and giving it to Paul. Frankly, research and development this again was reserved for the state sector. And it was there to develop, design and imbibe transfer of technology. But there are many problems here too. Now, we said military aviation requires huge development costs. Huge. Lack of critical engineering and manufacturing technologies and not very much experience in design and systems integration is our beginning. Now to top it all, control regimes play its own role to deny us technology from abroad. What our scientists must remind themselves repeatedly from morning to evening is time and time waits for no one. If you don't give us the technology at that moment of time, we have no option but to get it from outside. By the time you come up with the technology, I'm sorry, it's redundant. That's how it's changing. We better wake up to this idea. Right, why in comparison? <coughs> Look at the space industry. Initially wholly controlled by state, later, diversified in respect of products from the private sector and has turned out to be a great success. Same in India. But one is a great success. Let's go to the side development program. I think it was mentioned by the chief himself. Is there a success to a very large extent? Now, the private sector. <coughs> Till very recently, Players were not given an even playing field and hence couldn't really play its supportive role more so in defense aviation sector. The government has taken steps in fine tuning some of these to remove some anomalies <coughs> and big players are coming in and a little slow as procedures are still a wee bit complex for them to come in and play. Offset policy. 
spread, a lot has been talked about this, and I understand there is a big discussion on this. Whilst I will limit myself here, except to put forward the following for either information or whatever it might be of use to. Our observed policy is very easy. As of now, complicated and foreign vendors are finding it difficult to understand it clearly. This is a fact. I understand the company submitted this offset POEC 20 times. At the end of the day, he says, yeah, I don't want this program yet, you want to take it home. 20 times. There is something wrong, obviously. Okay, obviously these lead to hold up, delays in procurement and induction. And at times we find it difficult in the commercial negotiation thereafter because it takes such a long, long time. There are some examples of countries who have a very well defined offset policy. We are like, say, examples like Brazil, Spain, Israel, uh, South Korea. Why can't we pick up the good points from them? Do we have to create everything on our own? We were late. We started it good, but let's get the best. It's available outside also. Let's take whatever can be made applicable to India. From them, there's no harm. There's no shame. <coughs> now, India has a strong aerospace industry, there's no doubt, as brought up by Chairman HL. Maybe a slightly behind in terms of technology, and if this industry is given the correct impetus, I'm sure it will contribute substantially to India's growth as an economic power also. Now, MR market just talked about. In 2008, the what figure I have here is it was valued at 970 million and has the capacity to absorb massive investors. India must avail of this opportunity. We have been hearing of MRO facility being set up in Gwalior right now for 20 years back, I think. For Boeings and all that. I don't see it anyway. 20 years have passed. We've got a huge landmass. But we are always fighting for that landmass, either for some reason or the other, NGOs mostly. FBI. Oh, sorry. I understand here, by current estimate, the Indian companies in any offset, as of today, 20 billion dollars is what is there hanging to be absorbed by us. As of now, 20 billion dollars. With a few more things that in the recent past, I think by the end of next year, it will close off to close to 40 billion dollars. That's a huge chunk of money. Right, FDI 26% is definitely at this moment, in my opinion, a restricting factor. Especially in respect of defense. Now going by this limit, Indian companies, like I said, 20 billion at this moment, 40 billion maybe next year, have to invest. Where can this money come from? This is the next. So there is a urgency here to review this. We definitely we need to review because we can't pump them. The FBI is 26 percent, 74 percent by an Indian company to pump them that kind of money. Where is he going to get it from? Seriously, you've got to think about it. Presently, the offset policy, or the TOEC, I call it, and uh, the proposed induction are clubbed together. That means prior to opening the envelope, they have to give the offset, which is acceptable to the government. This also leads to delay. Definitely. I think we could think about that whilst one has been determined as the L1, and as the negotiations are going on, the offset policy will be given time by the vendor and, of course, 
the receiver to study the options. But if we clump them together before opening the envelope, at times like this, time, this case has been viewed 20 times. Right, if we are now to emerge as a global player, certain challenges have to be overcome. So I'll start by saying, firstly, foreign companies are reluctant to give access to and, of course, transfer critical cutting edge technology because of the limited management control in the Indian entity. Plain simple. If he doesn't have very much of say, would he like to give out his source codes for that matter? Access to new material for development of technology, for producing composite material of the future, of the future, not of the present, have a direct impact, especially on fighter aviation or military aviation, because weight and payload are the two critical things of military aviation. Funding. Aerospace business is highly capital intensive. In the initial growth phase, capital need to be injected <coughs> rapidly and continuously to maintain the pace. This either needs government backing or private banking to do the backing. We have to look into this also. Because if it is not continuous, if there is a break, I'm sorry, you have lost out on time. And like I said, time and time waits for no one. International certification. Now in this aviation game, international certification has become very, very, very important. And it is a must. We don't control it, please. It is controlled internationally. We must have the capability to produce goods of the class of standard that is required in the international society and the forum. And, but as of now, we are not very close to that. We are not very whether we like it or not. Of course, the well-defined offset policy is the need of the day, which I am given to understand that the other one made a statement. By January, he wants a fine-tuned offset policy to be present. So we are going forward in that direction. We have to build in competition in bids for various which would pit both the public and the private sector and give a level playing ground. Here also, the Rakshamatri has made a statement a few days back, a few weeks back, saying categorically that PSUs and ordnance factories will have to compete from next year onwards. This is another good sign, another very good sign. Let me end up by saying that. All is not grim, as it may sound as I talk now. If, if my talk did sound grim, it's maybe because of English is not my mother tongue. But what I have said, I hope are facts. The time has come to actually evolve. There is a very urgent need to match the timelines to our present and future needs and capabilities, actually. We have to move from this TOT for license production to core design and core development. I remember, for a decade back, I was talking to the chief designer of Sukhoi, Mr. Simenon, when we were discussing on our Kaveri and our LCA and this and that. He said, I'm very proud that my Indian brothers are doing that. Please carry on. But you want to know how to make an aircraft? Please come and sit with me. For 15 years, after that, you will have the capability of making something. And this is Mr. Sindhanov, a good friend of mine, by the way. So we have to move to poor designing and development, otherwise we will be left in only this license production, POD, etc., which we are moving the fifth generation aircraft. The MTA, we are going into this area, which is good. We have to reorient our defense export policy to make the industry self-sustainable. 
I think I mentioned it earlier in some talk or the other. We are behind even Pakistan as far as the total quantum of export in terms of dollars are concerned. Sad, but true. Oh, yes, we are witnessing radical changes and a paradigm shift in our thinking for more. And what more, there is a sense of urgency as to be seen at the Jubilee the last two days in all forms. The last suggestion is that India needs a national aerospace strategy and commission. The more you delay this, the more the various rules, regulations, everything are not that effective. We have to have this. is suggested long time back, but somehow we haven't yet taken off in that direction. Because only with this will we get that impetus as a nation. Of course, the sanity between private and public has been talked about adequately in the last two days, nothing more to say. But we have to move towards indigenization. And which, if we do move towards that goal of 70% indigenization, it is a win win situation for all and definitely a win situation for the nation. Thank you very much. Jai Hind.